If they went through what they went through, certainly I can live life. Denise Griggs is the author and publisher of a book titled A Mulatto Slave, The Events in the Life of Peter Hunt. I wrote the book as though Peter Hunt was talking. As a genealogist, Griggs has been helping black people in the greater Sacramento region trace their roots to America's dark past. For years, she's also been researching her own bloodline. Ancestry and family search, that wasn't out there and available to me. So I went to a Mississippi website and I put it out there. I'm looking for information on Peter Hunt. Griggs discovered she's the third great niece of Peter Hunt and third great granddaughter of America Hunt. It's life, it's just life, it really is, I can't judge it. Peter Hunt was born into slavery on August 5th, 1844 in Liberty in Amick County, Mississippi. He's the son of America Hunt, a black female slave, and Captain Henry Hunt, a white male slave owner. Historical documents describe Hunt, the slave, as quote, 5'10", gray hair, gray eyes, complexion mulatto, and hard to distinguish from a white man. Hunt learned how to work as a tanner on the plantation. He is a tanner, tanning hides for like hats and belts and saddles and chaps. Hunt also learned how to read and write. Through the Emancipation Proclamation of 1863, Hunt earned freedom. He was about 18 when he was emancipated. He enlisted in the Union Army's United States Colored Troops. From 1864 to 1866, Hunt served in the Union Army as a garrison guard working to defeat the Confederacy in the American Civil War. About 179,000 black men served as soldiers in the U.S. Army, and 19,000 served in the Navy by the end of the war. Nearly 40,000 died due to an infection or disease. Peter came down with the measles. They expected him to die too, but he didn't. By the time he filed for his pension, and he names his wives. He names who he was in the service with, what happened to some of them. And those pension files, they are in NARA, in Washington, D.C., the National Archives. Through the Homestead Act of 1862, Hunt claimed more than 157 acres of land in 1874. The Homestead Act of uh, May 1862, Lincoln signed that into law, and it was to be enacted on January 1st, 1863. The Homestead Act gave citizens or future citizens up to 160 acres of public land. The person had to live on the land, improve the land, and pay a registration fee. It didn't say it couldn't be slaves. They were not to ask what nationality they were. By 1881, Hunt successfully went from being a former slave to building a home, cultivating 25 acres for farming, and building five structures. On June 7, 1915, he died at the age of 70 in Mississippi. And I think looking in his eyes and, uh, sorry, and just to say thank you. Nobody knew anything about him. His grandkids didn't know, his great-grandkids didn't know. And so it's like I can let go of that picture now and send him back home to Mississippi.